Good morning you crazy koalas and welcome back to the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2. This is Top Cut guys, we are in the semi-finals now and we have got some amazing games ahead of us. As you can see on this side of me, we've got the pairings. So we've got Picarom versus Eternatus and then of course Eternatus versus Eternatus as well. Those are our top four decks today. Um, on stream today, we have on the first stream, we've got the reigning, defending undisputed kahuna koala ptcg open champion rudolf duplessis defending his title against marine that's the game that we that i'm going to bring to you guys first so i hope you really like it i'm very excited to see these games uh, i see that they're still busy getting things sorted out so as soon as they're ready we will jump over to the game i am beyond excited guys it's been a long night i've been thinking about these games all night and i think it's incredible so um yeah we'll, we'll get straight into the games as soon as we can just uh another shout out to our sponsors uh solar pop and unplug yourself solar pop the premium importer for board games and toys and our local distributor of all things tcg as well as unplug yourself play at home you can find their social media handles in the description below guys we're gonna get this thing started i am super super stoked and uh once it's ready it'll be popping up on your screen stay tuned don't go anywhere guys Guys, here we go. I see that the game is setting up. Let's go have a look, guys. And will Rudolf walk away from this tournament champion again? Or will there be an upset? Who knows? Four, four amazing players in top cut here. So let's just get straight into the game. Let's see what's going on. So we've got Rudolf playing Eternatus. We've got Marine, the only guy who's not playing Eternatus. He's playing Picarom. So uh, yeah, let's see how everything's going to work itself out here. I'm just uh, very curious. All right, we see a Sneasel start for Rudolf and a Bolton start for Muin. And it is Rudolf who is going first. Sydney Valtal, we see a couple of options. No, Muin just passed. Whoa, did he just pass his turn? My oh my. We see a Pokecom for an Eternatus. Going through the deck, looks like all of his pieces are there. He's playing the Weavile version. We see a Dark Energy and a Marnie from Rudolf. Potentially helping Muin with his banned hand. We don't, we don't know what Muin was starting with there. Quick ball. Discarding the professor's research. Hang out the crowbat for some extra card draw. We see crowbat for three. He's looking for a way to retreat here. Okay, we've got a great ball and a quick ball. And it's a pass. There's no way for the Sneasel to get out of the active. It's not too bad for Rudolf because it just means that he won't be charging up any energies anywhere else. But he's got an Eternatus with an, with an energy and that's a start. We see a quick ball from Muin. Discarding a Chaotic Swell. Okay, 
clearly looking through his deck obviously it's his first deck search so he wants to see what's there what's not getting a mu and mu2 gx mu2 and mu sorry a mu3 discarding a boltant of the quick ball for a dene for dede change we see a crushing hammer this could be this could be crucial and it's a head so that's going to shut down eternatus for another turn we see the dead change for a fresh six and Muin still has a supporter to play can he get the electric energy for the electrify All right, we see the speed energy attached, the boltant on the bench. And we see the electrifier, so he gets to find two energies from his deck and attach it to one of his Pokemon. Well, attach it to his Pokemon in any way he likes, actually. Okay, we see the draw. Great ball for an Eternatus here. Eternatus being benched. We see a quick ball, discarding the money, so obviously opting for the Crobat here. And we see Crobat drawing a fresh four. There's a crushing hammer to his side as well. It's a Tails, unfortunately. And the power accelerator for 30 and he'll probably attach to the bench eternatus so he's got two options to get out of this just in case uh muin has any a very explosive turn here currently as it stands if he attaches an energy to the boltant he can hit for 130. we see another crushing hammer can he get another heads he gets another head so he's discarding the energies of the bench eternatus guys this is this is brutal these crushing hammers are hurting a lot See a energy attached to the bench, Bolton. Team Yalgrunt, so much energy denial, guys. <laughs> this is this will be Jonah's uh, Jonah. This is Rudolph's third turn, and he's got no energies in play. Muin just taking total control of the game by just nullifying all of Rudolph's energies. Guys, if you are just tuning in, welcome. This is the semi-finals of the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2. We have got Rudolf, the reigning defending champion versus Muin, playing Picarom. Rudolf playing Eternatus with a Weavile tech. And um, let's see who's going to take this and go through to the finals. On the other side of the stream, we've got Jonah Alter and Latano Wendal, both playing Eternatus as well. Three Eternatus, one Picarom. You can see the matchups in the standing window on the left, on the right hand side of the screen. So, um, yeah, let's see what's going down, guys. We see the Professor's research. Unfortunately, no energies for that power accelerator. Looks like he's going to switch into the Voltal. We see a Pokecom putting the Zigzagoon back in. Is he going to maybe grab an Eternatus now? The Eternatus VMAX is coming out. Eternatus, VMAX eventually coming into play, opening up a few more bench spots, and it's a hard pass from Rudolph with one energy in play. Muin really devastating with all the energy denial. Could we could we say after watching this tournament that Crushing Hammer could maybe be the best card in the format at the moment? We see energy attachment onto the active Boltant. 
We see the boss's orders. That's some major damage, guys. 220 damage from the Bolton V, softening the Eternatus up down to 120 HP left. How is Rudolf going to respond here, guys? No prizes taken as yet. We see the dark energy potentially being attached to the active Eternatus here. Is Rudolf maybe just going to go for the quick knockout on this Boltant? Okay, we see he doesn't get much off the draw. We see another Eternatus though. And I think that's what he needed for the 210. That's 210 damage and Rudolf takes the first two prize cards of the semi-final matchup. Guys, this is exciting stuff. Let me know in the comments, who do you think is going to win? Who's going to take the tournament home? Is Picaram going to make it to the end? Is Picaram going to take it home or is it going to be one of these bad Eternatus decks that have been floating around? L let me know what you guys think. This is some really exciting top tier competitive play in South Africa. And we're only bringing you the best guys. And it's going to be non-stop right up until the end of the finals. We see the energy attachment onto the Picarom on the bench. We see the air balloon being attached to Boltant. And it looks like we're going to see a full blitz. We see the Marnie. Potentially just trying to get some fresh cards for himself. Rudolf gets a fresh four here as well. Okay, we see an Eternatus. And we see full blitz for 150. Muin gets three energies, but not only does he get three energies, he gets three prize cards, guys. Muin is three prizes to four in the semi-final matchup against Rudolf, our defending champion. We see Eternatus come up, and it's a draw for Rudolf. We see the Zigzagoon. Eternatus VMAX comes into play, opening up the bench spots once again. It looks like Muin is charging up that Mu3 for a potential full, um, sorry, tag ball GX. We see the Hooper with Evil Abomination, we see the energy attached to the active. And it's a fresh six off of the Crobat V for Rudolf. Weavile GX may just be needed to try and swing this game around. We see another Eternatus benched. And a Professor's Research for another seven. Rudolf digging hard through his deck. And we see the Power Accelerator for 30. Not yet. Yes. Power Accelerator. And he's where is he going to place that energy? Potentially on the Eternatus VMAX. And it's a pass. Can Muin pull off the Tag Bolt GX here? We see another crushing hammer, guys. And it's another heads. Muin is killing it with his crushing hammers. Electromagnetic radar for Muin here. He discards the Raichu Raichu, so we could be seeing a lightning ride here. Or perhaps a tandem shock as well. All right. Muin really weighing out the pros and cons here. We see the speed energy attachment. So it looks like he's going to try and go for the KO with the Boltant. We see another crushing hammer from Muin. Will he get a heads? <laughs> Not 4 for 4 I'm afraid. But 3 heads on a crushing hammer. Wow. Really debilitating uh, Rudolf at the moment.
You see the switch from Marine probably into the Boltant. Because it's got more than enough here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. We're looking at 280 damage with Bolt Storm. And another Marnie from Marine just upsetting Rudolph's hand over and over again. And we see the Bolt Storm for another two prizes for Marine. Marine going down to one prize card in this first game of the semi-finals, guys. Rudolph's back is against the wall here. He's got no energies in play. What can he do? You see the energy attachment to the active. We see the boss's orders for the Dedene. He's really just trying to buy some time here. Galarian Zigzagoon coming down, putting 10 damage onto that Mew, Mewtwo at the back. And it's a pass. Does Muween have an energy and a boss's orders for game? We see the boss's orders. Does Muween have the energy though? And there's the switch. We see Muween take game one. Ladies and gentlemen, Muween is one game up in the semi-final matchup against the defending champion, Rudolf Duplessis. Guys, this is intense. This is intense. Like, it does not get more tense than this. We're going to go straight into game two, guys. And I don't know. It is... This is... This is competitive play in South Africa at its finest with two of our best players in the country going at it. Rudolf's title is on the line here. Will he be able to defend it? Can he turn it around in the second game? Um, I think we should go have a look. It looks like they're getting started. Six prizes apiece into game two of the semi-finals of the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2. If you guys have just tuned in, welcome. This is as big as it gets. This is for all the pies. This is it, guys. An energy and a pass for Marine here. Marine also had a pretty bad start in the last game as well, but he managed to turn it around. Rudolf seems to have an amazing starting hand here. He seems to have all the pieces he needs. He's got a way to get another Eternatus. He's got the energies. He's, it looks like he's got everything he needs here. But even with the best hand, even the best hand does not, <laughs> cannot combat those hammers. We see him eyeing out the Eternatus. Grabs that Eternatus V from deck. Quick ball. Discarding the professor's research, so obviously going for the crowbat here. Okay, he'll bench the sneeze, he'll attach her energy to the active and then play crowbat. So he'll be getting five out of this. <laughs> we see a crushing hammer for himself here. Payback, payback with the hammers. It's 30 damage to the Aldegoss. The Aldegoss could potentially be stuck there. And we've got Eternit two Eternatus with energies here. Rudolph having a much better start. Can he shut Muin down right now and take this to a game three? It all depends what muin has got in his hand with regards to supporters. We see a quick ball. So there definitely won't be any donk here. Discarding the Yalgrunt. 
knowing that the Yal Grunt is not effect as as effective with uh, with a with Sneasel on the bench, with potentially getting a Weavile. We see the Bolton, so he wants to do a turn one Electrify. That's basically where he's coming from here. We see the energy attachment for a speed energy, so he draws two. Air Balloon onto the Aldegoss, so it's coming out, and then we see a Marnie from Muin. Seems to be Marnie and Crushing Hammer seems to be Muin's way to success. That is a devastating hand. That is devastating, guys. We see the Electrify. So he gets to put two energies down and he's going to be obviously be placing them both onto the Mew 3 and off we go. Off the top deck, guys. Rudolph manages to get a Marnie. He had a really tough hand there without it. Can Rudolph potentially get an explosive turn here? We see a Crushing Hammer at the tails. Not as lucky as Marine, I'm afraid. Galarian Zigzagoon coming down. He's going to place the 10 damage on... Onto the Mew, Mew 2. And we see a Marnie. Can he get a VMAX? He gets the VMAX. He gets another Hammer and a Crobat. He's got a very explosive hand, guys. This could be exactly what he's looking for to get himself out of this mess. He still needs an energy. He still needs an energy. But here comes another Hammer. Oh, swing and a miss. We see another Zigzagoon come down. So that's another 10 damage on that Mew 3. And we see a Crobat for 5. Can he get the energy? He misses the energy, guys. He didn't get the energy. He can still get a Weavile and attack here. He needs to get a Weavile off of the Great Ball. It looks like he's just going to switch. And we see the Power Accelerator for 30. Alright, so softening uh, the Bolt up a little bit. Things seem okay for now, but hopefully Rudolph does not run into a string of hammers like he did in the last game. I see a lot of new people tuning in. Welcome everybody to the stream. This is game two of the semi-finals of the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2. Muin is up a game against the reigning defending champion, Rudolph Duplessis. Nobody knows what's going to go down. We see a dead change from Muin, drawing a fresh six. People in the chat are asking why didn't Rudolf go for the Weavile? That's a good question. I thought that might have been the play as well. Not too sure why, but I'm sure Rudolf has got a reason for it. He's been he made it to the semi-finals. So let's see what happens. We see a Picarom come out from Mourinho. With an energy. Oh, we see a crushing hammer. Oh, it's tails. Okay. Swing and a miss. Crush and a whiff. Just checked in with the other game and it seems that they are still on game one right now. Another crushing hammer from a win. Swing and a hit. There goes another energy. Muin sticking to his guns and doing what won him game one with those crushing hammers. We see a full blitz here for 150 and he gets three energies, up to three energies from his deck onto one of his bench Pokemon. And that's a second Mewtwo and Mew charged up. We see a, maybe eyeing a quick ball here. Discarding the boss's orders. Opting for a Crobat. 
the other two V Maxes are in the deck, so he's got access to that. We see the energy attached to Eternatus. A great ball. Can he get the V Max? He misses the V Max. He also doesn't get the Weavile either, which would have been a nice art for him as well. He takes a Sneasel. Nope. He takes the Eternatus instead. Eternatus and Crobat for four. He hits the Weavile and the Eternatus VMAX, guys. He's got options. Ideally, I'm sure he would like to get a switch to get this particular Eternatus out of the active. Regardless, Rudolph does have a knockout here. Whether he gets the switch or not, we see a money from Rudolph. He misses the switch, I'm afraid, so he's going to have to commit to this Eternatus. We see a Dread End for 270 damage. Rudolf taking the first three prize cards of this round number two. Game two of the semifinals. I ju it's just been reported that Jonah Alter has won game one on the other semi-finals guys. So things are moving along smoothly. We see the speed energy attached to the Bolton. There is currently 160 damage in play for Bolton. Muin does have access to other attacks from the discard pile with the Mew and Mewtwo. It seems like it's only a Picarom. He could tag Bolt for 200. We see a Quick Ball here. Discarding a Chaotic Swell. Tapu Koko, so that's going to be the extra energies he needs for that Bolton. We see Tapu Koko Prism come down with his ability, Dance of the Ancients, allowing Marine to get two energies from his discard pile and attach it to two of his bench Pokemon. There's energies everywhere. I see, Andre, you in the chat. Uh, uh, tag teams are three prizes, that is correct. Hence, uh, Rudolph taking three prizes off of knocking out that Mew and Mewtwo. We see the Bolt Storm for 220 and that's enough. Buwin takes three prizes, shutting down Rudolph's energies in play. And it is three prizes apiece in game two. Baby Eternit is coming up to the active spot. We see a potential capture energy. Ivaltal. Chaotic Swell being put into play. And we see a Power Accelerator for 30 damage onto the Bolton. And it's an energy going to the Eternatus VMAX on the bench and a pass. We see energy attached to a bench Bolton V. Team Yalgrant from Muin. Returning that cap. Oh, returning the dark energy. I thought Team Yalgrant was only the activates any energy in play. 
and we see a bolt storm for 250 is this the beginning of the end for rudolph to see marine going down to one prize card can rudolph pull a trick out of his hat to get back into this game or is that it are we at the end marine with a lot of cards in his hand We see an energy attachment is eyeing out the Eternity VMAX. We see the boss's orders on... No, yes. Considering a boss's orders here. We see the Great Ball. Opts for nothing. We see a quick ball. Crobat is being out out with the quick ball. I'm assuming... Um, Rudolf might be looking for a mon here to try and get the hand down. It's a fail and a Crobat V coming into play. He's got a switch in hand. He's, he needs to try. If Marine has the boss's orders in hand, he's got game. The game is over if he has the boss's orders in hand. We see the boss's orders on the on the Dedene. And it's a pass. Marine needs a switch and a boss's orders or an energy in a boss's orders to win the game. Does he have it? We see an electromagnetic radar. This will give him access to a Dedene. And then he can dig. He can dig for victory here. He takes the Dedene from deck. See a quick ball. discarding that chaotic swell for a crowbat v i'm sure we'll see a dead air change here for a fresh six and needing an energy aura switch plus the boss's orders to have game he's got the boss's orders can he get the switch he's got a big charm did it change for a fresh six? Does he have the energy or the switch here? This will be it. It's a well played from Marine. It looks like Marine's got it. He's knocking Rudolph out of the tournament. It's the concede. We see the switch. And that's it, guys. That is it. Rudolph Duplessis, our previous champion, is out. Marine goes through with Picarom to the finals. And what a game. What a game, folks. Muween goes through to the finals. Rudolf Duplessis is out of the tournament. Our previous champion. And we will definitely have a new champion here today. Um, I want to see if I can grab the remainder of the other semi-final matchup. So let me see if I can get that game up on stream for you guys. And uh, yeah, let's go check it out.
Guys, it looks like I managed to grab the other round, so we're going to jump straight into that. It's Jonah versus Latana there on game two. Jonah up a game. So let's go see what's happening in that game over there, guys. As you can see, we've got Jonah, who's on five prize cards. Latana won four, and it's a mirror match. Latana playing the Sableye build of um, Eternatus, and Jonah playing what looks like the same list as Rudolph does with the Weavile and the Umbreon Darkrai tech. See the zigzagoon come down for Latano. You see energy attached to that benched sable eye. We see the boss's orders from Latano, and that's a dread end on Weavile. Latano goes down to two prizes in game two. We see a quick ball. Quick ball for a Sneasel. Sneasel comes down into play. And we see a Marnie from Jonah. We've got a Cape Town versus Johannesburg match here, guys. Latano being out of the competitive scene for quite a while. This is his first tournament back in years, apparently. And um, Jonah very active in the scene, as we know, making top four in the last tournament. See the energy attached to the benched VMAX. And it looks like we're going to see an evil abomination for 150 onto Latano's VMAX. Does Latano have boss's orders for game? We see a Marnie, so no boss's orders from Latano. That's five prizes to two in this game two. Jonah is up a hand. Whoa, what a money for Latano. Jonah's hand looking really bad. Thanks for bringing that up in the chat, guys. This is Marine's first tournament in ages as well. Looks like the guys that have been taking a long hiatus are coming in and really putting in the work. So well done, guys. Well done. I think the last time I saw Maureen play was at the Cape Town SPE maybe two years ago or three years ago. And he took that one home. He won the SPE. And we see the dread in from Latano. Latana going down to one prize card in this round two, or game two, sorry, in the semifinals. Latana's got no energies on the bench though, so we could see a swing here from Jonah. Jonah hits with a dread end and he takes the KO. Jonah goes down to two prize cards. Latano only having access to a Sableye, Latano does not play Weavile in his list. So therefore, Latano has no way of moving those energies around, so he would need some major, major action on the Zigzagoons. Alternatively, he would need boss's orders. You see a quick ball from Latano discarding an Eternatus VMAX. For a Galarian Zigzagoon, it's what he needs. We'll see a ping here. On the Sneasel on the bench. 
Does the Tarn the Tarn has got boss's orders? We see the energy. And I think that's KO. That's 70 damage, guys. The Tarn takes game number two. And it's one game apiece, guys. It doesn't get closer than this. The Tarn going up a game. Guys, this is crazy. Like, th there's way too much action going on here. So this is one game apiece. Um, just to check in for you guys. There is about 20 minutes left for this round. Um, the next game takes it. Winner takes all, guys. So um, it looks like they're getting ready to play. And uh, we can just jump straight into it as soon as they are ready. Guys, are we going to... We know Picaram is going to see Tinnitus. But will Marine get the exact same match as he had in the previous round or is marine going to play against latano's sableye variant of eternatus this is a very interesting and man like i said it doesn't get better than this guy so stick around for the rest of the games we are going straight into game number three for the other semi-final latano versus jonah let's go have a look it's a game of peace Okay, Jonah starting this round. A really, really bad starting hand, guys. Some good camaraderie from both players here. As we know, Eternatus isn't the most explosive deck. So, at the end of the day, I don't think the tunnel will be able to donk him. This is intense, guys. We know it's intense. We're watching along with you. We see Latano bumping out Chaotix as well with Dark City. See a Pokecom putting the Galarian Zigzagoon back into the deck. This is Cape Town versus Johannesburg, guys. Rep your city. Who do we want to see going through to the finals? Are we going to have another Johannesburger or are we going to have another, or are we going to have a Cape Townian in the finals? Rep your city. Who are you guys supporting? Cape Town or Johannesburg? Let me know in the chat. Latana taking a Crobat. Crobat drawing two. We see Eternatus come down onto the bench. An energy attached to the Eternatus V. Galarian Zigzagoon popping 10 damage on that Crobat. And it's a pass, so off to Jonah we go. We see a crushing hammer at the tails. We see the quick ball eyeing out an Eternatus V. We have supporters for Jonah's Berg here. <laughs> nice. We see a Marnie drawing a fresh five, giving Latana four cards. We have the Sneasel. We see a switch. We, there's options here. There's definite options for, for Jonah. We see a Crobat. Three fresh cards. There's a Hooper. We've got the VMAX in hand as well.
We see the switch for Hooper. And a pass from Jonah. So off to Latana we go. Let's see what Latana can do for his turn. There's no chaotic swell now. Dark City will get him out of trouble. There's the Dark City. I called it. And we see a professor's research discarding a Marnie, a boss's orders, and a professor's research here, guys. We see the Eternatus VMAX coming to play. We see a Galerian Zigzagoon. He'll be able to place 10 damage somewhere. Onto the Eternatus V on the bench. We see another Galerian Zigzagoon. That's another 10 damage to that Eternatus. We see the Sableye, Latana's trump card by the looks of these games. Hiding energy attached to the Eternatus on the bench. We see the switch. And a Crobat for a fresh 6. Latana really popping off here. As we know with these uh, mirror matches for Eternatus, it's all about when cards are being played. It's all about who gets the first attack on whose Eternatus. Um, some very interesting uh, takes on, on how everything goes in these games. You see a scoop up net from Latano. Galerian Zigzagoon comes back down. That's an extra 10. Puts it down to 310. Getting it closer. For It's another scoop up net. And that'll be another 10. On that Eternatus view on the bench. Just pinging it down. One by one. Another scoop up net from Latano. And it's another 10 damage on that Eternatus. All of a sudden, Sableye V looking like a real threat right now. We see Latano take the prize there. A little bit of a glitch. But Latano goes down to 5 prize cards. And it's 5 prizes to 6 in game 3. Of the semi-finals the second semi-finals we know that Muween won his game one if you guys went here already Picarom is going through to the finals against one of these decks and who's it gonna be see a quick ball discarding that professor's research Latano really, really looking well set up here. See the zigzagoon being eyed by Rudolph. Oh, not Rudolph, sorry guys. Jonah. Jonah playing the zigzagoon. Placing 10 damage on that Eternatus, just softening him up a little bit. Dark City coming in clutch for Jonah. Latano's Dark City helping out here. Latano would need a boss's orders to do some severe damage on that Eternatus. We see a professor's research, so we won't be seeing a boss's orders here. There is 12 minutes left for this round. Assault gate for 90 on that Zigzagoon. And Latano goes down to 4 prize cards in this game 3. Latano establishing an early lead here. We see the promotion and it's a Marnie from Jonah. Jonah got some bench Pokemon. He's got a way to get a Crobat as well. He's got an energy. He's got options here now. Not looking as stale as before. We 
You see the Pokecom putting an Eternatus back. Grabbing a Crobat V. And we see the Crobat drawing a fresh four. He's got a Pokecom, he got a Hooper. So he's got a way to get a Weavile. We see the attachment to the baby Hooper, and I think that's the way he wants to go here. He wants to try and knock out that bench. It is, let's have a look, guys. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. He can definitely take a knockout on that Hooper with his Hooper, the Evil Abomination Hooper. We see the retreat and Evil Abomination for Jonah. Jonah taking a prize card, going down to five prizes. That's five prizes to four guys. With approximately 10 minutes left of gameplay. We see Latano bench and Eternatus V. You see an energy on the bench, Sableye. You see a Piers from Latano. Hiding energy and an Eternatus VMAX for Latano. So he's got the energy for the Sableye next turn. He needs the boss's orders to clean this game out and go through to the finals. We see the switch onto the Eternatus VMAX and that's a dread end. Latano taking yet another prize card. Going down to three prize cards in the semi-final. Jonah promoting a Crobat V and off we go. Crashing Hammer. Okay, he denies that Sableye now. So that, Sab that Sableye is out. There's no way that Sableye can attack next turn in Latana's current bowl. Jonah potentially looking to set up a fresh Eternatus. He would need the Weavile GX to do this. He gets the Weavile. We see the Weavile evolved and Crobat for a fresh four. There's a switch, but he didn't get another Eternatus, I'm afraid. See some Cape Town supporters entering in the chat. Guys, this is a rep your city battle. Rep your city. Who's it going to be? Cape Town or Johannesburg going to the finals here. And we see a dread end. No, not yet. All things considered here. Yeah. We see the dread end for 210 for Jonah. And it's a pass over to Latano. Roughly seven minutes to go. We see another Eternatus on the bench. Latano attaching an energy on that bench to Eternatus. So it looks like the Sableye strategy is out the window for Latano. Latano hitting for 270, placing this Eternatus down to 20 left.
We see the dread end for 270. Jonah's Eternatus is down to 20 HP left. Jonah needs a fresh Eternatus here. Switch so he can get with Dark City. He can get the Crobat out of the active. If he gets a fresh one, this may spell trouble for Latana. He would need a boss's orders. This is nail, nail biting stuff, guys. Just over five minutes left for this round. He gets the Eternatus. He gets exactly what he needs here. This is big, big, big stuff for Jonah. You see the retreat. He can use the Shadow Connection to move an energy through to that active Eternatus VMAX. And it looks like we're going to be seeing a dread end for the knockout here for Jonah. Jonah also having a boss's orders in hand. We see the dread end. Jonah goes down to two prize cards. It is two prize cards to three in game three of the semifinals. Guys, it does not get more nail biting than this. Does the Tano have the energy and the boss's orders for the game? That's what it comes down to. We see an Eternatus on the bench. We see the energy. Does he have the boss's orders? It's a professor's research. He doesn't have it. He does not have it, which probably means that Jonah has got this in the bag, guys. Unless the Tano plays the reset stamp, Jonah has got the game in the bag. We see a scoop up net. Oh my word, can he get it like this? Can he get it like this? There's four scoop ups. Okay, so he can't. He can't get it like this. He can't. That would have been insane if he won. If he won with with zigzagoons. We see 10 damage onto the active. We see a great pull from Latano, but I think this is all just for show, guys. It, for me, it appears that Jonah has got game here. There's the attack. Jonah's got game. Jonah is going through to the finals. It is all Johannesburg finals. Well played by both gentlemen, and Jonah has got it, guys. Jonah is going through to the finals. We see the dread end for 270, and that's it. Game over. GG. No re. We have a finals, ladies and gentlemen. We have a finals. And what a finals this is going to be. This is going to be exactly the same as the semi-final. Jonah and Rudolf playing pretty much the same deck list. And we're going to see Muin go against another Eternatus in the final. Guys, this is nail, nail biting. Stay tuned. I'm bringing you the finals right now. Stay tuned.
guys what intense semi-final matchups those were we've got Muin and um jonah ready to play their finals they're just setting some things up so we'll be with you in two minutes stay tuned guys for the finals of the kahuna koala ptcgo open 2 stay tuned we'll be with you in a bit
All right, guys, the moment we've been waiting for is here. We are at the finals of the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2. We've got Jonah playing Eternatus Weavile. We've got Marine playing Picarom. Who's going to take it home? Both guys are from Johannesburg, so well done, to both, well done to both of them for getting this far. And who's going to take it home? That's the real question here. It looks like they're still setting their game up, so we'll be cutting over to the game shortly. Stay tuned. The game is starting now. Be there. And here we go, boys and girls, for all of you pokey people, all of you crazy koalas, this is the finals, Jonah versus Marine. here we go, we've been waiting for this, we had to go overnight, we slept on it, but here it is guys, here is the finals, are you ready for this? I don't know if I can handle this, the excitement is just too much, so let's, let's watch guys, support your guy, who's going to take it home today? Is it going to be Picarom? Is it going to be Eternatus VMAX? Let me know in the chat. Give these guys a shout out. Give them a cheer. Let's see this game go down. We see the Mewtwo start with an energy and it's a pass. Jonah Pokecoming. Putting Crobat back in. It looks like he's eyeing out an Eternatus V. We see the chaotic swell after an energy being attached to Eternatus V and a Marnie from Jonah. Options are limited for Jonah right now. He can get a Crobat. Then he can switch as well. So he, he, he's got things that he can definitely do here. We see the switch for the Eternatus and Crobat coming down for a fresh four cards. Can he get an energy? He gets an energy. Crushing Hammer. Is it Tails? Swinging a miss for Crushing Hammer. Crushing Hammer, definitely the MVP of this tournament. See the Quick Ball, discarding Umbreon Darkrai, eyeing out the second Eternatus. And we're going to see a power accelerator for 30 and an energy attached to the bench Eternatus. Jonah having the best start possible for the Eternatus deck. We see Bolton on the bench. And a speed energy attached to Bolton so Muin gets an extra two cards. We see a crushing hammer and Muin gets another heads. Muin is the king of the crushing hammers guys. Muin is hands down the king of the hammers. We see the air balloon and a professor's research. Muin has all the luck, all the luck with the crushing hammers. Muin obviously weighing out his options here. Quick pull by Muin discarding the electromagnetic radar. F 
Thor raining down his hammers, discarding his energies. If we could call this deck like Thor's hammers, it's an electric deck. It plays lots of hammers. Is this like Thor's hammer? <laughs> Moveen plus hammer is <laughs> is best deck in format. It does seem that way. You see another Mewtwo and Mew placed on the bench. And Electrify, Moveen gets his two energies. And it's a pass. We see the Eternatus VMAX on the bench. Professor's research for a fresh seven. It's an Eternatus, a Sneasel, a Weavile. There's loads of stuff happening here. Energy to the bench to turn it this now. And a Crobat for three. We see a Zigzagoon. And it looks like it's going to be just a power accelerator from Jonah. And he gets to attach another energy somewhere. To that VMAX and off it goes back to Muin. We see the switch and a money from a win potentially looking at a top of coco here maybe a reason for the switch that one looks like it hurt that money looks like it hurt you see a quick ball from a win Tapu Koko coming down for that Dance of Ancients. He's got the two energies. And we see it go to the Mewtwo and a fresh Boltant over there. So options are open. We see the Boltant. It looks like we're going to be seeing a Bolt Storm here. Bolt Storm for 190 damage. Unfortunately, an energy short for Muin. We see the fresh Eternatus VMAX on the bench. Jonah has got the Sneasel on the bench, so he's got access to be able to use that Shadow Connection. We see a Heads for Jonah on the Hammers. So that's a Hammer and an Energy off of the Mew 3. Boss's Orders on that Mew Mew 2 and Crobat. Can we see the Weavile? There's a Switch, that's all he needed. All he needed was the Switch. He's got the Zigzagoon, so he'll be taking a Knockout on this Mew 3. And he gets another heads for a hammer. Are the hammers starting to bet betray Muinia? We see the energy on the bench to VMAX. And that's Dread End for 240 damage. Jonah going down to three cards of game one of the Kahuna Koala PTCGO finals. Muin really with his back against the wall here. Muin needs Amani as it appears that Jonah has game in hand. And he's got the money, lucky. He's got the money, guys. There's a switch. We've got a Weavile. I mean, he, he's got stuff now. You see Mew, Mew 2 energy attached there. And an Electrify for two energies. 
Jonah could still pull this off. Jonah could go get a Crobat. And then he could get a boss's orders and finish this game right now. Energy attached to the benched VMAX. We see a quick ball. Discarding the professor's research. He's got the crowbat. He's got three bosses orders. He's bosses orders in deck, guys. We see the Weavile coming down. We're gonna see no switch. Just five cards. He's got he draws all three bosses orders. All three rubbing it in. Jonah takes game one. Jonah takes game one, guys. Wow. What a flex. He gets all three of them. He pulls all three bosses orders like a boss. Yes, guys, we're going straight into game two. Stay tuned, please. Don't go anywhere. Game two starting right now. It looks like they're all set up for game two and they're ready to go. So uh, let's get game two underway, guys. It is 1-0 to Jonah in the finals. And uh, Muin has got to play back from this deficit. So let's go have a look. We see Jonah starting off with the Hooper. It's an energy and a pass for Muin. Great ball for Jonah. He gets a Sneasel. Eternatus V on the bench, Sneasel on the bench. We see a Pokecom. He opts to put the Hooper back, probably for a Crobat V. Just having a quick look through the deck to see what's available to him. Looks like all of the the important pieces are there. Jonah really thinking things through here. We see the switch for the Eternatus. And we've got the fresh four cards. No energies that's gonna be hard guys no energies not much jonah can do here he had he was lined up for such an amazing turn one but he needed at least one energy here. he's going to be fighting back that's a pass from jonah this is bad We see a Marnie, <laughs> Marine's favorite, Marnie and Hammers. Still no energies inside for Jonah. We see a quick ball, discarding an energy, probably for a Bolton. Depending on what's in Marine's hand. Definitely a Bolton. See the Bolton placed on the bench. Speed energy attached. You get to draw two fresh cards. We see the switch. This is everything that Mui needs. Does he have a Dedene on top of this? Nope. It's just an Electrify. So that Picarom goes up to three energies now. And it's a pass over to Jonah. Jonah gets an energy. That's important. Misses on the Crushing Hammer. Discarding the Crobat, grabbing an Eternatus. We 
we see the energy attached to the active and it's a professor's research with no cards in hand getting seven new cards and we see the pie accelerator for 30 seems like a perfect recipe rinse repeat Crushing Hammer for Muin fails this time. Does Muin have anything in hand? If Muin has got a dead hand, this is bad for him. Because Jonah can potentially knock out that Picaram next turn, putting Muin's back against the wall. We see a data change. Okay, so it's not all over. The Will Muin have more hammers, perhaps? We see a hammer. I called it. Muin's always got hammers, guys. We see the discarding. Muin would need seven energies in play to knock out the Eternatus. An energy from hand and a Tapu Koko could get him there. He plays a Mew and Mew 2. I'm guessing the Tapu Koko's prize and another Marnie from Muin. So much disruption. Chaotic Swell comes down. And we see an Electrify from Muin. Getting another two energy cards, this time attaching them to Mew and Mew 2, and it's a pass from Muin. Can Jonah capitalize on this? Jonah only needs six Pokemon in play for Eternatus to knock out the Voltant. We see him evolve the bench to Eternatus, we see a quick ball discarding Chaotic Spell. We see another Eternatus V being eyed here. After benching the Eternatus, it's a Professor's Research. There's a Sneasel. So he's got Pokecom, he's got Crobat, he has access to a couple of things. Tool Scrap, unfortunately, being a dead card in hand at the moment, unable to cut that card down. We see the Weavile GX. Another Pokecom putting the Crobat back in. Probably just getting a Crobat again. Just trying to thin that hand down. Yep, that's it. Weavile GX on the bench. And it looks like he'll be drawing three off of Crobat. Okay, he's got an energy... But does he does not have access to an Eternatus though, so it's just going to be another Power Accelerator from Jonah. And that's 30 damage, and he gets to attach another energy onto one of his bench Pokemon. Onto the VMAX it goes, and off to Mawin. We see the team yell grunt so much energy denial guys so much if we can deny another energy this turn this means trouble for jonah you see the energy attachment to the bolton for turn
and that's it bold storm for 220 marine takes the first two prize cards of game two of the finals We see the energy attachment to the VMAX. We see a quick ball from Jonah. For Crobat. Boss's orders. That's a big one. Jonah needs one more Pokemon. And he gets the extra Pokemon he needs. So this will be a knockout on the Picarom, guys. This is a big, big swing turn. Sneasel going down. And we see... No? Yes? Dread N for 240 damage. Jonah going down to 3 prize cards. It's 3 prize cards to 4 in Jonah's favor with a game in hand. Can Jonah close this up and be the victor and be crowned the new Kahuna Koala PTCGO champion? Win promotes the dinner. You see the energy attached to the Bolton on the bench. Air balloon on the dinner. Quick ball. Discarding that tag switch. For the Dene. Top of Coco comes down. He did it change for a fresh six. We see a crushing hammer from Marine which fails. Not all of them can be heads, Marine, let's be honest. We see the dance of the ancients getting two energies back from the discard pile. There's a... We've got a Raichu Raichu here. Big Charm putting a Picarom out of harm's way for a one-turn KO, but we know, we saw in Jonah's hand that he does play Tool Scrapper. Oh, that is not a great hand, although it does give him access to a Crobat still. If there isn't one in the discard pile. Marine thinking about his options, he retreats into the Bolton. And we see a Bolt Storm for 220 damage. 
leaving Eternatus VMAX down to 120. There is a way for Jonah to win here. He would need a boss's orders and he would need a tool scrapper. In fact, I think Raichu only has 260, so he just needs a boss's orders here. There is a Crobat in the discard pile, so he doesn't have access to the draw now. So unfortunately, he's stuck exactly there. I see people in the comments saying, Thor's hammers have ran out of lightning. It does appear so. We see the switch in hand with Weavile, so Jonah could present a fresh Eternatus. Okay, we see Umbreon Darkrai coming out for the first time on stream. We see the switch eyeing out that Eternatus VMAX on the bench. We'll see the shadow connection moving the energy to the active. We see another one. And this Eternatus looks like he's ready to go. We see another Weeball come down. And it's a dread end for the knockout on the Bolton. Jonah going down to one prize card. One prize card away from being crowned champion. We see electromagnetic radar from a win. If Marine can get off any energy denial now, that would be debilitating for Jonah. Fails the electromagnetic radar. Marine plays Professor's Research. See two hammers in Marine's discard pile. Electromagnetic radar again. To the energy attached to the Mew and Mewtwo. Crobat V comes down for four new cards. We see a reset stamp down to one and it's a switch. Is he going to tandem shock here? Oh no! Jonah can get out of this though. 
Jonah top decks Amani, guys. If he if he switches and gets a tool scrap off this Marnie and another Pokemon, he's got game. Jonah has got game in sight. Unfortunate stamp for Marine. What a play though. We see the switch, we see the Marnie. And there's a tool scrapper. Jonah's got it. Jonah takes it home. It's a well played from Jonah. Jonah takes it home, guys. It is over. The tournament is finished. Jonah takes it. This is all just for show, guys. We're going to see the shadow connection for the two energies. It's down to 270. And that is game. Jonah takes the finals 2 0. Eternatus takes it home. Well done, Jonah. Well done. That's it, guys. We have ourselves a winner. We've got a winner. We have a winner, guys. Congratulations, Jonah Alter. You are the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2 champion. We will get an interview with Jonah in a short bit. We will. I'll get him on the line. We will have a quick chat with him. See what he thought about the tournament and how his matchups went. And that's it, guys. We have ourselves a champion. I'll be back with you in a minute. After, so we can, we can have a chat with Jonah. Stay right there. All right, guys, we're going to get Jonah on the line quickly. Let's see if we can get him here. Jonah. Yes, sir. Congratulations, man. Well done on Thanks winning. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Kahuna Koala <laughs> PCCG Open 2. Um, we, we saw the mirror, obviously. We, we saw this game in the semifinals with um, Rudolph not having as much success. And um, yeah, congratulations. Those hammers hurt you hard, huh? They do. They do. <laughs> so he didn't hit all the hammers against me, luckily. Yeah, um, luckily. I think he yeah. used them all against uh, Rudolph. Okay, against Rudolph, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Rudolph was complaining. <laughs> <laughs> it seems but, like Yeah, it. I got a bit lucky with hammer heads. And yeah, I know the matchup to an extent. No, okay. You're not supposed to KO the Boltunt. All right. Um, the, the Boltunt is a bait because then they can stamp you to one. Exactly. But, uh, in, in that last game, I had to care the Bolton because my hand was dead and I knew I prized two Marnies. So yeah. I was trying to just draw some Marnies off the prizes. Forgot that I had actually prized the Switch. Okay. So I was... Uh, obviously, Switch is a very important card in that matchup. Yeah, for sure, because of Tandem Shock. Yeah. So yeah. I, I had... I knew I had one Switch in deck left, uh, but ho was hoping to draw it off the Marnie. Then he stamped me anyway. <laughs> Got super lucky, drew into switch mine and the money. And then, wow, 
and, and of the them two on, he got the two scrapper. Exactly, that was huge. He literally, was huge. got got everything, got everything. Uh, just a, yeah. a, a quick question. Uh, so, what was your reason for playing Eternatus today? Um, like, you, I know you've been playing in a lot of limitless tournaments. Um, was yeah. there a reason that you played uh, Eternatus specifically? And was there anything so, else you tested? Sorry, what was that last part? Was there anything else you tested as well? Oh, okay. So uh, I pretty much only tested Eternatus. So I've been playing it for most of the Limitless tournaments that I've been playing in. Okay. And it just feels like... Uh, so at least in those Limitless tournaments, the most popular deck by far is Picaram. Okay. And as the Picaram player, like I've played, I've, I've tested a bit of Picaram, and it just always felt like you had to get quite lucky to beat Eternatus, All which right. never really felt good. So yeah. I thought, you know, rather than getting lucky, let me be the person who they have to get lucky against. Yes, yes. So it's worked well for me in, in the Limitless events. I've usually played like a straight Eternatus without the Weavals and the Umbreon. Um, but then Rudolf and I were testing, and this past week, two big tournaments on Limitless were won by this list that I'm playing, or similar similar variants with the Weavile. All right. And that's because it it actually gives you an out to winning against uh, Luke Metal. Which oh, yeah. I, I did I did expect a few more. There was only one in the whole There was only one, so, that's right. Yeah. So uh, that's the whole reason we played this list was to have an actual out against Luke Metal with the Umbreon Darkrai. Okay. Uh because you it's it's otherwise an auto loss. Yeah, for uh, sure. And, you know, in such a small tournament, it doesn't feel good taking an auto loss to no, anything. No, not at all. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Okay, so you only you only play tested with Eternatus. Um, what do you think was your hardest matchup in this tournament? What was your hardest game that you faced? Um, so, I think uh, I had a lot of close sets. So, uh, my game, my top four game against Latano was very close. Yes. Um, I actually think I should have lost that. Okay. Um, <laughs> if if luck had gone slightly differently, <laughs> if if I didn't money him out of the boss, I almost thought I had lost that for sure. Yes. Um, so that that was a very tough set. Um, otherwise, um, this this finals game, you know, it went. It seemed quite smooth because I just drew everything, but I was very worried about it. I know, for Obviously, sure. Moeen was quite first in the matchup by now. He played it in top eight, again in top four. I'm sure he played it in Swiss as well. Yeah. So he knew what he was doing. Um, and I knew I just had to had to be on the, the better luck side there. For sure. That uh, that game with Latano, like uh, uh, watching what I saw, um, it came down, that crushing hammer landing on that Sableye, I think that was probably the beginning of the end. Yes. Because yeah, when I saw that crushing hammer, I knew that like chances of him coming back was a little bit more slim. He obviously needed the uh, boss's orders to win, but so did you, and he couldn't get rid of yours, so that gave you the victory. And yeah, yeah. It, it just looked like a masterclass in the final, so congratulations. So yeah. you are the Kahuna Koala PTCG Open 2 champion. Congratulations. We'll obviously do prize Thanks giving. So on, we will give prize giving um, probably later in this week. And yeah, that's 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 basically it. We've wrapped it up. Is there any shout outs you want to give to anybody? Yeah, I'd just like to shout out Rudolf uh, for testing with me. We've been back and forth between the list. We played close to the same 60. So yeah, shout out to Rudolf. Shout out to everybody supporting me. And you know, shout out to Kahuna Koala for hosting this event. Been a blast. Uh, I didn't expect to win going into it, but uh, <laughs> here we are. So I'm very happy that I did. And yeah. Thanks. Yeah, you are most welcome. Cool. Thank you very much, Jonah. Thank you for the time. And yeah, congratulations once again. Oh, thank you. Cool, guys. So that was Jonah. And yeah, what what a masterclass indeed for Jonah in that final. Um, there's they, they, He couldn't have done it any better, to be quite honest. Um, just looking at his, at his matchups for the day, um, he... Did, he went undefeated in this tournament. Um, he was seven wins and two draws, and I'm assuming those last two draws were IDs. So he went undefeated with his Eternatus deck list, and oh my goodness, what a game that was. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Um, all the way till the end, if you have. 
And yeah, this is what an amazing top cut this was. Um, I just want to give a couple of shout outs once again. So shout out to our sponsors, Solopop and Unplug Yourself. Solopop, the premium importer of board games and toys, as well as our exclusive distributor of all things TCG, as well as Unplug Yourself Play at Home. You can find the links to their social media platforms in the description below. And yes, thank you for everybody in attendance. Thank you for you guys watching on YouTube. It has been a blast presenting this tournament to you guys once again what another great success there will be more guys on that there is some other news i've had a chat with solar pop and with the great success of this tournament we will be doing more we will be at least doing a kahuna koala ptcg open each quarter for every block set release so that is awesome there are some other prize givings that need to be done and i will like to do this on facebook as well but i just wanted to give a shout out to one lucky winner i decided to give a a prize to the most rogue deck of the tournament the most rogue deck of them all and i could not find a better rogue deck this this rogue deck prize will be it'll be in between how well the deck did as well as or how random the deck was right so the rogue deck that stood out to me the most is more than likely going to be i did have a look and i need to be honest the winner has to go to nabs ash so i think this is nabila um the deck list was a random mishmash it looks like this this is also our youngest competitor in the tournament he came in with a random mishmash of deck of a deck and he managed to win two games so congratulations you will win the charizard vivid voltage theme deck and you i'll contact you via facebook with regards to that guys uh, we will do the full prize giving on facebook later this week thank you so much for everybody who stayed right until the end i really do appreciate it thank you for everybody watching thank you for the support over the weekend and yeah guys uh, once again thank you to the sponsors and everybody involved um really do appreciate everyone thank you to julia from durbanville games for helping with the tournament organizing as well helping me judge and yeah that's about it guys we are done we have a champion his name is jonah alter congratulations guys and congratulations to everybody else who made it to top cut and all the players for all of their games so great to see the turnout that we had and that's me until the next tournament guys cheers